watching Influence Me Wednesday with Morale All Things Hair. Hello, my name is Morello Kane, and it's Morel All Things Hair dot Media. It's the hair debate, and we are here with this month's segment of What's Up Doc with Dr. Nikki Hill of Soka Centers, and she is here to discuss. I tell you, this particular topic right here, when it becomes to the clients, from this bacteria and all of that, we're gonna bring it to light. We're gonna to dispose on what is going on when sanitation is not being handled properly. So Dr. Hill, how are you doing today? I'm doing lovely, how are you doing? I am doing great, Dr. Hill. And so when it comes to our tools as cosmetologists, if those tools, and we're talking about brushes, combs, um, anything that is used to, to go through the scalp that may touch the scalp at all, mm -hmm. right? And so how could those tools, if they're not properly sanitized, affect clients? Absolutely. So sometimes, you know, clients bring little family <laughs> friends um, to the salon or the barbershop and unknowingly. Mm -hmm. um, there could be bacteria, it could be viruses on the scalp, it could be fungal or yeast on the scalp. And so anytime if you're touching that client, prior to them having any type of shampoo service or cleansing service, and especially in barbershops where a lot of times there is, that process may not occur, okay. um, there can be a strong possibility of contamination of mm. taking those organisms yes. from one client and bring, carrying them to the next client if tools aren't properly sterilized and sanitized. Oh, wow. Mm. So now, when we talk about bacteria, what are some things that can be, you know, um, transferred because you know some people may think oh it's just dandruff or it's just a you know I just have a little dandruff on my scalp and oh that's I can treat that but it can become something serious than that Absolutely. So bacteria, we all have natural staph on our skin, but what's interesting is everyone's immune system is used to that particular type of bacteria yes. that helps their microbiome, keeps us all nice and happy. And whenever there's a shift and change in that microbiome is when people start having any type of um, reactions or start wow. noticing changes on their skin. Yes. And so bacteria can definitely transfer over yeast, which is one of the most common reasons for, for um, dandruff can wow. also be transferred as well. We all wow. have natural yeast, we all have natural bacteria. It's if we have other type of strains that okay. are introduced into our, our microbiome is when we have any issues or when there's an overgrowth of even our own natural microbiome, we can have issues at that time as well. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you, um, if a person, you know, they may think that was just a little dandruff, I've never had this before. But now, when should they be concerned to say, okay, you know what, I need to have this further evaluated? Because it could be something a little bit other than just dandruff. Absolutely. So whenever there's excessive scaling and flaking that's uncontrolled, mm -hmm. you know you had a really good cleanse, <laughs> you know you know your, your stylist or cosmetologist is really getting in there and working things through and had yes. a nice you know, healthy scalp and healthy hair at that time, but two days later you have excessive shedding or excessive wow. scaling or flaking or itching. Or if you're having acne-like bumps on the scalp, tenderness on the scalp, and that's saying there's something else going on and we do want to address that. And that's when you want to go see your board certified dermatologist to really assess the skin and the scalp, because remember your scalp is skin. So right. you want to make sure that's all healthy and it's appropriate, and especially if there's infection, you want to stop it early. Because unfortunately, the body may try to self-heal, and the best way wow. it knows how is to try to form scar tissue and permanent hair changes. Oh, wow. And so for us, that's you know um in the salon how what are some measures that we can do to prevent this from happening absolutely so in regards to kind of prevention and also sanitize sanitation yes. um one you want to ask your clients before they when they sit down have you had any symptoms of itching excessive flaking any scaling any spots of hair loss and we actually offer a course that can really help clients or help cosmetologists yes. and barbers from behind the chair really understand and, and be that forefront of defense for your Absolutely. clients so you can see those things in their scalp and you can ex ex uh, explain it to them and also help them to know how to address it but once they say they are having any of those symptoms you may mm -hmm. want to take a look um, especially if they have a lot of dandruff, a lot of excessive irritation, sometimes it is good to have gloves on or at least to be able to be near a sink where you can wash your hands immediately after. Because not only is there a risk of you know transmitting something from a client to a client, but also from the client to the stylist or the right. client to the barber. So you, how often do we touch our face, touch our scalp, you know, touch anything with the hands that we lay on our clients, but we wanna make sure we're, we're 
protecting ourselves as well. Yeah. And so if you use knee combs, if you use knee brushes, if you use knee bobby pins or clips on someone's hair that hasn't been washed just yet, and potentially even after washing sometimes, yeah. that's where they have that old school <laughs> barbicide. Let's talk about that, because that's it's actually a right. sanitation. It's an right. oldie but a goodie. Um, yes. It has primarily ammonium chloride as well as some other sanitizing um, chemical agents in there. But the truth of it is, yes. uh, one, whatever you immerse in there, whether it's a comb or a brush, you should keep it in there for 10 minutes, because it does require 10 minutes contact time to destroy whatever organisms are on that item. Yes. And then two, after you remove it, it does have a little bit of formaldehyde in there. So you want to make sure you have a second container you can dip into just pure water yes. to rinse out whatever um, the, uh, the barbicide is left on there and then dry it off before applying it to the, the patient or the client's scalp or their hair. Absolutely. And then 24 hours after use of that barbicide, you technically should breathe it, refill it. Absolutely. Throw it out, refill it, because that means all whatever organisms were hanging out are just hanging out dead at the bottom and you just don't want to, re you know, you want to reduce as much contamination as possible. So sanitizing and then disinfecting. Your sanitizing is also just wiping down the chair, wiping down anything. You see flakes scaling their skin cells so they could have Absolutely. organisms attached to them. Exactly. So just wiping those down if you see them. And then of course, just making sure your instruments and tools are clean. Absolutely. And Dr. Nikki, you stated mm -hmm. something. Wiping down that chair, because even with servicing children, we have a tendency of when they get sleepy, they want to just lay their head just right there. And so you just want to make sure because their head is, hair is coming in contact of the chair, the back of the chair. And a lot of times when we're combing, those little particles are just right there at the bottom. And so you just want to make sure that you sanitize that area as well. As well as after you are using those combed brushes, etc., place those in a container with a top just to keep them separated from what you from the clean items and so dr hill thank you so much um i again um when it comes to sanitation when it comes to fungus spores or whatnot if there is anyone that say okay have i been affected where can and i know that you say at um go to their certified dermatologist mm -hmm. but where can they come to you to get more information and for it to be further evaluated. Absolutely. So if you feel like you may have had any kind of exposures or concerns about any exposures or just interested in making sure you have a healthy scalp and healthy yes. hair, um, you can find me at Soka Center. Um, we're located in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to our website at SokaCenter.com or call 404-474-2301 to schedule an appointment. And you can follow me on social media at Dr. Nikki Hill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, um, what's up, Doc? Soka Center with Dr. Nikki Hill. My name is Morello Kane. It's the hair debate where we come to debate, debunk, and discover all things hair.